in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Gregory of Nyssa defined the human being with two words, D5 and N. He used to say that the human being is a D5 animal. Now what does this mean? It means that indeed, as we can see from our bodies, as we can see many times from our behavior, we have an animatic aspect. We have many things that we have many things in common with the animals. Many or, of the organs are the same, many of the body parts are the same. Unfortunately, many times even our behavior is the same, like the behavior of the animal. Many times we transform everything into food fights. We are like hyenas fighting for food. By the grace of God, because nowadays, at least in our country, most people have enough food. We are not fighting for food anymore, but we are fighting for everything else. And we even make it a cause to fight for my rights, to fight for what I think is good, and to prove the other side wrong. People in our society make it, as I said, even a cause of their life to fight for their rights, for what they think is their right. Is that not a food fight? Even within families, many times we are behaving like animals. We are fighting for what I think is right. Sometimes as parents, we try to impose on our children what we think is right. And we forget to listen to them. They might be young. They might be unexperienced. But they have the right to speak up. And we should listen to them. At least listen. They say that one of the best ways of listening, what a, what a good listener does, repeats what the other person is saying. And this is one of the best ways of helping if the other person indeed doesn't think right in that moment. That's the best way to help somebody else see that he or she is not thinking right. But at least listen and repeat to help the person see himself or herself that what she or he is expressing is not right. So many other times, even within families or within the church, even within the church sometimes, we try to impose what we think is right. That's when we behave like animals. That's when we are not dignified animals. How do we look like when we are deified animals? 
In today's Gospel, we see a beautiful example of such a situation, and this is why I'm speaking to you about this today. Because today, it happens that August 6th falls on a Sunday, and every year on August 6th, we celebrate the transfiguration of the Lord when He took His three, this three of His disciples, Peter, James, and John, on a high mountain, and He was transfigured in their presence. And Moses and Elijah appeared on the mountain, and they were talking with the Lord. And in that very spiritual environment, in that very heavenly atmosphere, Peter exclaimed, Lord, it is so good to be here. If you want, if you wish, I would make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Now what do you notice? How many people were on the mountain? All together. Six, right? Jesus, Moses, and Elijah talking, and Peter, James, and John witnessing this miracle of the transfiguration of the Lord when He was shining brighter than the sun and talking with Moses and Elijah. What did Peter say? For how many people to make hands? For three people. He forgot about himself. He forgot about James and John and he was seeing only the Lord, Moses and Elijah. Because in that moment, Peter experienced what he talked about in today's epistle reading. In that moment, Peter experienced deification. In that moment, Peter was full of the grace of God and he became like God without becoming God. And that's the theology of the Orthodox Church. That's what we are called to become. Deified enemies. Beings that are not fighting for rights, fighting for food, fighting for everything, thinking that it is my duty to protect myself and my rights and my home. Oh. When we are deified, when, when we become like God, we forget about ourselves. And even if we offer something, we say, if you wish, I could do this for you. How beautiful. Because this is another mistake that I see a lot around, happening around us. Sometimes we think that we are transposing ourselves into the other one, and what do we do? We tell the other one what to do. <laughs> I know what's good for you. Let's do this. Can you see how the devil pulls us around? To think that, you know, I know what's good for you. Let's do this. Peter said, if you wish, I could make three things. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Therefore, we have faithful. Let us learn. Let us learn that we are called to be deified enemies. That we are called to transpose ourselves into each other, and when we transpose ourselves into each other, we ask the other person, if you wish, I could do this for you, something that we really think would, could be good for the person, but ask the person, do you think that this could be good for you? Before we do it. Let us as St. Paul says in the letter to Philippians, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And now he gives clearly the example of the Lord, because he is the example of our deification. What happened on that mountain of transfiguration is to happen to us. 
He revealed to us that we could become like Him. That we could become like God. And we could become like God by becoming one with each other. Because God became human to make us divine. He deified us by being in, in the form of God and did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, keep taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. This mind, St. Paul says, that should be within us. To lower ourselves and to become like the people around us and to see what do you need? Not what I want. What do you need? That's what Christ did for humanity. He lowered himself and became like us to fulfill our needs. And when we do that, God will do to us what he did to his son. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When we transpose ourselves into the people around us, God will lift us up. But we are so afraid that if I'm not protecting myself, nobody is going to protect me. Because we do not know to put our trust in God. And when we humble ourselves, and we become one with the people around us, we experience what Peter, James, and John experienced on the Mount of Transfiguration. Not food fights, not animosity, endless animosity, but the Kingdom of Heaven, which according to St. Paul, is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.